Hey everybody! Just logging on here. Happy Saturday morning! It's a gorgeous day outside. And I'm catching up on some stamping in my craft room. Oh my gosh, look how crooked this is behind me. That's funny. That's better. I've got my windows wide open and I'm catching up on my stamping in my craft room. I'm just going to bring up my video on my computer so I can see all of you as you're hopping on and read your comments and questions. <clears throat> Here we go. All right, so as you pop on, make sure to say hello. Make sure you ask questions if you have them. I am making a card for the Paper Craft Crew Challenge this week, uh, which is really exciting for me because I was asked to be on their design team. So coming up, you will uh, get to see my cards featured um, I think their challenges go live on Wednesdays, so you'll get to see some of my projects featured there to give you inspiration to join those challenges. And today, their challenge is April flower, sorry, April showers bring May flowers. And so I'm going to show you how to make a super cute baby card that you could use for a baby shower. Um, <clears throat> to go along with that theme and then I'll be uploading this video as soon as I'm done to YouTube and connecting it to my blog where you'll get all the dimensions and everything for it and I'm going to have a prize drawing for everyone who shares my video and shares my blog post so you have to share to get in this drawing for a prize um, and once you share, make sure you comment that you've shared. Um, and as always with my lives, I will have a prize drawing for all the comments. And because I'm not scheduling these regularly and kind of going um, on, I'll be doing one drawing at the end of the month. But the more you comment on all my videos, the better chance you have to win. So, hi Gail. I'm going to get started stamping right away, so I'm going to flip this around. Okay. Okay, I think that's pretty good. <clears throat> now, I'm making a white on white card and the card I'm making again, the theme is April showers bring May flowers. So I'm making a baby shower card. I'm going to be using my Swirly Bird stamp set. This is from the Big Catalog. Doesn't have any sentiments, but it's got some really cute images there. And then also the, I think it's called a Little Wild Bundle. Now this bundle is also in the Big Catalog. Um, the stamp set and the dies are not retiring but the bundle is retiring. So that means if you ordered this bundle together before it retires at the end of May, you'll get a 10% discount. After the end of May, of course you can order the framelits and the stamp set, you just can't order them together and get your 10% off. So just a way for you to save some money. Okay. The first thing I'm going to do as we make our card here is stamp the uh, elephant from the stamp set. So the stamp set comes with dies that you can uh, fold these in half once they're stamped and die cut to make um, tags for gifts. Otherwise, you can just use them plain for your cards, the images of them.
Now you're going to need to stamp two of these images for this card. I'm stamping that in my Memento ink. And you will need your aqua painter as well. So I'm using Smoky Slate ink. And now I'm just going to come in and color in these elephants. What I did was squeeze the Smoky Slate ink into the cover of this ink pad. Now this is just plain Whisper white paper. Some of you may not know that you can watercolor on your Whisper white paper. It's a bit heavier duty than typical white paper, that <clears throat> cardstock that you would get elsewhere. That's what I love about Stampin' Up's white. And we are just going to shade in this elephant. I'm being careful not to add too much water because while you can watercolor on the Whisper White, you don't want it to be too heavy like a watercolor wash. <clears throat> and now I'm going to go on my second elephant here. For my second elephant, I only need the head colored in. And the ears. Okay, now the great thing about our aqua painters is when you're done, all you have to do is brush the color out of your brush and then they're ready to use for your next color. I like to use my hand to kind of gauge how much water is on the brush. Next we're using Flirty Flamingo and I'm squeezing it into the lid of my ink pad. Getting some color on my brush and I'm going to come in on the ears of this elephant and just bring in a little bit of pink. Now that's showing up because the gray is already dried and I'm gonna come in on the eyes and the tip of the trunk a little bit. Then on our other elephant that we've shaded in, I'm going to come in on the toenails as well. All right. Now for this card, I want it to be a three-dimensional card with some layers popping up. So the next step is to take our dies from the Little Loves Framelits dies and you will cut out both of these stamped images with your Big Shot. Now I've done that for you already. Let me just put this away so that you don't have to watch me do all this cutting. And once the dies were all cut out, I snipped off the tail end of the elephant. So I just separated this piece from this. And I fussy cut on my second elephant the colored in trunk and head and ears. So we've got two pieces here. Next, we're going to adhere these pieces together with some mini dimensionals.
we're going to make our elephant have some layers for our card. So I'm going to line up the elephant face with the outline of the one below it. All right, for now we're gonna set that aside. Okay, the next step here is to bring in some flowers. I wanted to play around with some of our new in colors. So I'm going to use our flirty flamingo. This in color would be retiring, but they're bringing it in in the color revamp into the new uh, color collection for Stampin' Up, which is awesome because I really love this color. And this is a photopolymer stamp set, so I'm gonna grab my piercing mat. And I'm just going to from my Swirly Bird, stamp three of these solid circles in the bottom right corner of my card in Flirty Flamingo. And next, I'm going to use my lovely lipstick, the new in color. This is the new Stampin' Pad. As you can tell, I love this color. Look, it matches my fingernail polish. Um, so these new stamp pads open like a makeup compact, like so, and then you just slide them secure so you can use them. I'm coming in with the rose detail from the Swirly Bird stamp set. And then I'm just going to stamp over my flirty flamingo circles here. These colors look awesome together. Now I'm going to go back to my scrap of Whisper White and I'm using the sentiment from the um, A Little Wild stamp set that says a great big welcome for a sweet little someone. And I'm going to stamp that three times. I actually don't need this pad underneath it. Now the reason I've stamped that three times is because we're going to be fussy cutting around these words. And because of how the stamp is set up, some of these letters uh, get a little smushed and as we cut, we wanna make sure they have plenty of room. So first I'm going to cut around a great big. Snip around that. And then this welcome, as you can see, got kind of close. So I'm not gonna use the welcome from here. But this little someone word turned out really nice. So I'm gonna use that. And then here we're going to use the welcome. And then on the third one, I'm going to use the next line. <clears throat> okay, now 
my mini dimensionals are going to come in handy again to adhere these to my card layer. I don't know where I put them. So I'll just grab another pack here. And now I'm going to use up some of this white space with these words that I snipped out. And if any of your dimensionals are sticking out over the edge, all you have to do is just snip along your border, snip that dimensional around the edge. So we've got a great big welcome. For a sweet little someone. Okay, now that we've got those words on there, we're going to use some of our baker's twine. I'm using the silver with our whisper white. I think it's called silver thread baker's twine. Ooh, I can't remember the name right now. And we're just gonna wrap that around our layer here a few times. And then we're going to tie it in a bow. Remember when I'm working with Baker's twine or linen thread, I always like to tie the bow in a knot first so that it stays secured and the layers stay tight on my card. And then I tie it in a bow. Okay, then you just move your tail ends where you need them. And then pull the ends to make the bows the size that you would like. If they twist, no big deal, just untwist them. And then what I like to do to keep my bow in place is use a mini glue dot on the knot of the bow. I'm going to trim my ends, grab a glue dot, and then we can secure that down. All right, all that's left then is to adhere our elephant and then put it on our card base. So I'm gonna use up the edge of my dimensional sheet here for the elephant. And then I will do the same for the back. I 
will adhere that to a Whisper White thick card base. Use my bone folder to make a nice crisp piece here. And there we have it. Our card is complete and adorable. I made another card using four flowers instead of three. I thought the three would look nice too. So there are the projects. Cute, huh? Okay, make sure that you order this bundle before the end of May to get your 10% off. <clears throat> And make sure you share my video to be entered to win a prize. Share my blog post also gets an entry for a prize, and it'll be a good one, I promise. Um, all comments are entered to win a prize at the end of the month. Thanks so much for stopping by. I'm going to upload this to YouTube and connect it to my blog where I'll give you all the dimensions for the cards. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel, too, because I release videos there that I'm not doing on my Facebook as well. So thanks again for stopping by and joining me on Saturday afternoon. I hope you have a great rest of your weekend.